Welcome to this episode of Out of Country. Out of Country is a videography and travel series where I get to sit down one-on-one -on -one in a relaxed fashion and speak with ordinary people who are doing extraordinary philanthropic and volunteer work in other countries. Usually when somebody does something amazing, they want to share it with the world. But my next guest will tell us about a project he took part in halfway around the world where it had to be kept a secret until almost the last day. I'm speaking about none other than Martin Parnell, super marathoner, philanthropist, volunteer and professional speaker here at his home. Thank you, Martin, for joining us. Great, Terry, great to be here. And I'm speaking about a marathon that you took part in in Afghanistan. Correct? That's correct, yeah. In uh, 2016, I flew over to Afghanistan and took part in the second marathon of Afghanistan. Second marathon. Second ever. Second ever. Okay, so this is a marathon that is going to be happening each and every year now. They hope well, to. that's the plan. Uh, the, reason, the reason I went, and, and the very first one was in 2015, and i have been recovering. Early that year, I've been diagnosed with a clot on the brain, and I've been recovering from that. And in October of 2015, my wife uh, gave me an article from the Guardian newspaper about the very first Afghan woman to run a marathon. Her name was Zanab. And I read about the challenges she had, uh, the abuse, physical and um, verbal abuse for running on the streets. And when I read that, something kind of clicked in me and I said, I've got to go and support Zanab and the other girls and women. I mean, to me, it just was totally unacceptable that women were not allowed to run, run in the streets of Afghanistan. Run, really, that's amazing because here we take it for granted, that kind of freedom. Absolutely. I'd never really thought about it before. I, in my world, I, I put my running gear on. I live in beautiful Cochrane, Alberta. We have pathways just outside the door and trails. And I just head out for a run. Both myself, uh, my wife Sue has run, many you know, all our friends run. We, it's just a natural thing to do. Exactly. And to read about a, a, a women who were abused and verbally and physically for running, I just couldn't comprehend it. So the decision to go just happened just well, I think, quickly? Well, I think it was a case of I, was, I had been diagnosed with this clot on the brain and I was feeling pretty low. Uh, I, I had just started walking again. I, I was depressed. I couldn't run. I couldn't do all the things I love to do. And I think it was a case of I was feeling sorry for myself, to be honest. But then I read, but then I read about Zanab and I thought, Martin, you know, stop feeling sorry for yourself. There's other people in other parts of the world, particularly women and girls, who they can't even run. I think it was just sort of, that's it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something. And I think that helped me in recovery. It gave me something oh. to shoot for. Yeah, so I started running again. I, I ran a marathon in Calgary in July of 2016. And I was on a plane in October of 2016 heading over to Kabul, Afghanistan. Yes. Wow. And I, I should stress to our uh, listeners, to our viewers, that your book, The Secret Marathon, is out now several months ago. Yes, it, it uh, contains the background of why I went, the challenges of actually getting to Afghanistan with the visa, the insurance, all the due diligence. Yes. My gosh, I, like, I knew really nothing about Afghanistan, other than what we hear on the news, the Taliban, the suicide bombers, uh, just all the terrible news from Afghanistan. And, but then to read about a group, including international runners who had run that first marathon, I thought something's not quite right here. We hear all this on the wow. news, all these terrible things about this country. And yet there's a group that have gone over, including 10 international men and women who went and ran a marathon there. So it kind of piqued my interest sure. as to how is this even possible? And really it took six months of due diligence, checking into how to get there, who to go with. Uh, I went with a group called Untamed Borders, right. who's a travel group that takes people to um, conflict countries, be it Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, and also the group Free to Run, who actually supports these girls and women mm -hmm. um, in conflict countries through sport. So as you can appreciate, a lot of background work just to find out what was going on. Also in Cochrane, uh, two of my best friends, uh, Dr. Hanlon, has traveled to Afghanistan to do high altitude medicine okay. with the people in Afghanistan. And my other friend, Chris Shank, was actually the project manager for the only national park 
in Afghanistan, Bandamir. So again, I would talk to these two fellows and just okay. just glean as much information as I could. Wow. So it was okay. a big undertaking uh, to actually get there. And when you think of running, running is actually one of the most neutral. It's not an activist activity. It's not political. And yet it promotes health. It brings a lot of people together to network, to connect, and plus to challenge themselves physically. Because a marathon is 26 miles, 26.4? 26 26.2 miles. And I don't know what the kilometer 42.2 kilometers. 42.2 kilometers. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, so you didn't organize this, but from here you had to plan your journey there. Plus you also had to keep training as well for your run. Well, exactly. So uh, I shared this idea with my wife, Sue, and yeah, there were concerns. I won't, I won't lie. There were concerns. You know, Sue was concerned, and rightly so, about even going to Afghanistan. Hmm. Uh, we talked about it. I, as I said, I did a lot of investigation, but of course I started to train. And what happened was... Uh, as I was training, I'm also a member of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, as you are. Yes. And I went to a meeting in February and I met a woman, uh, her name is Kate McKenzie, who is also a member of CAPS. Yes. Uh, but Kate is also a, a film director. And Kate was asking me, you know, what are you doing? What do you have coming up? And I told her about my plan to go to Afghanistan. And she just thought, oh my gosh, like this is an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, from a filmmaking point of view, to to do something really special and so kate said look why don't because i was going to just take my uh, my phone and just take some video and have kate sure. edit it but kate said no 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 no. let's see if we can do this properly so she she got on board with coming over uh, but also she wanted to get the full experience so she decided to train for her to first train marathon wow. her first marathon and do it in <laughs> Afghanistan. So I have a training program, I have a marathon wow. training program I shared with her. And so there was many things going on, preparing for the trip, wow. Kate training for the marathon, trying to get funds to, to sponsor this film. And we were very fortunate. Uh, there's a, there's a, a company in Calgary, Viz Communication. Yes. And uh, one of the founders, John Wilson, I know very well. And Kate and I spoke to John and also the other founder, James McKenzie, and said, look, guys, this is what we want to do. You know, we know we're asking for a lot, but they just said, we're totally on board. It's like the law of attraction. It's right? amazing. Like, just... like uh, you know, both John and James have daughters and they said, look, we're on board with this. And so they spot, they supported us in taking a film That's crew great. That's to Afghanistan. Fantastic. So we took a film crew. All the dots just started well, to Well, it connect. started to come up, but, but, as, but Terry, we couldn't talk about it because as the name of the book is The Secret Marathon. We were not allowed to talk about the trip before we went yes. because of security issues. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't broadcast that we wanted to do a trip, that we needed support. We couldn't tell anybody other mm. than just word of mouth yes. that we did. And that's why we call it The Secret Marathon is we had to keep it under wraps. That's amazing. And I, I read this book. I bought the book at your book signing like two months ago. I started rereading it because when I first started reading it, I couldn't put it down. Okay, uh, thank what you. I love about the book, it's not only your writing, but it's also each of the participants submitted their narrative from their point of view, what they were going through, going to take part of this. So it's like a diary. It's like, if you couldn't have been there, to me, the, the best thing, if you couldn't have been there, this is the next best, best thing, yeah. well, is glad, reading this book. Well, thank you. you know, I can tell my story. I can tell my story of preparing yeah. to go there and flying over there and what I experienced. But I can't tell the story of Kate. No. What she went through. Yes. I can't tell the story of the Afghan women. It's their story. So I invited them. I invited them to write a chapter each, mm. and I was thrilled. They all agreed. And what was really incredible was I received the chapters uh, from Kate. I received two of the chapters in English from two of the Afghan women. Uh, two more chapters. They wanted to Skype, so I skyped with them in Kabul. Mm -hmm. And then Sue transcribed the chapters, okay. which was incredible. But two of the chapters from two of the younger women, they sent me them in Dari. So I received okay. the chapters in Dari. And a friend of mine has a friend who <laughs> translated the chapter into English. Wow, and so this super. is their words. I, was, I cannot say their words. They have told their story from when they were very young girls, what they went through, the challenges. And it's it's raw, it's powerful, and it's their story. So I'm just thrilled to be able to, I'm honored to have those stories. Wow, in the book. That's, yeah, that's amazing. That's what I, and uh, Kate's story is one of the first ones in the book because it's right at the beginning. And I reread that again. And actually Kate used this to overcome 
uh, overcome her physical goals and challenges from when she was young. And much like me, when I was a kid, I was round. I started to run. I couldn't run half a block and I'd get winded. So I kept running and running and running a little more, a little more. Then after I got into cycling, because with the, the higher kilometers, my knees started to bother me. So I switched to cycling. But it's amazing that, that Kate used that. Well, so let me just touch on Kate's again. <coughs> I think it's worth mentioning sure. is, is, you know, Kate uses running as a way of helping her with, with mental health challenges. And it's very important to share that she's opened herself up in this book mm -hmm. and shared it with everybody that when we are, and we do, we all have to a certain degree, uh, mental health challenges yep. and Kate uses uh, running and the fitness side and just the motion side to help her with those challenges. And I, and I, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's great That's that we great can put a hand out and share that with, with, with everyone. That's a good example that most anyone can use for their challenges to say, maybe this will work for me. Well, at least try so, it. I think try exercise, it. Yeah. I mean, one thing I, I found for me, and I started running late. I didn't start running until I was 47. Okay. And I only started because my brother challenged me to a marathon. So I had no real interest in, um, in running. And, and very similar to you, I was a, what's known as a child, a huggable child. Yeah. So I was a big I lad was and uh, <laughs> always pick last in sports. Yeah. So I, I never played on any team, any elite team or anything, but I love sport. Mum and dad always encourage us to play as kids, mm -hmm. but just for the love of sport. And so yeah. I'm like the reverse Olympian. They're generally pretty good at one thing. And I'm, you know, I'm rubbish at many, many sports, but okay. I love sport. Yeah. And I found running late. And for me to get outside, uh, fresh air, you know, on the pathways, uh, it's my meditation. And sure. I think whether you run or walk or cycle or swim, I don't care. But movement's so important for us. Yes, yes. So let's go to the marathon. So you travel down there, um, you arrive, you start uh, connecting with the other people from the organizers and the travel agency, which yes. are both from the UK, from London, I believe. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes. So, so yes, yeah, so we arrived. I mean, it took me three flights to get to Kabul. So basically from Calgary to Frankfurt, yeah. Frankfurt to Istanbul and Istanbul into Kabul. So oh, it's wow. about a 36 hour total travel time. Wow. So it was a long sort of day and a half. Arrive in Kabul and literally walk, go through security, walk out of the airport. And then we were met by James Wilcox, who's the founder, co-founder of Untamed Borders, the travel agency. Okay. So right there, I felt a little relief that I was now in their hands. Okay. I wasn't on my own anymore. And so that was huge. And so James and his group of guides, local guides, uh, met myself and other international runners, both men and women. And we went to a guest house in Kabul. Uh, for the first day, we did a little bit of touring around in Kabul, visiting uh, beautiful mosques, but also we saw playgrounds that were built by the men and women. Okay. We went to bread shops. So we could just see how regular people lived. And sure. this is really one reason I wanted to go is is to see what's actually going on. And yes, there's huge security, there's big concrete walls with barbed wire and there's, yeah. there's tanks and so on. But all around this wow. is men and women, boys and girls living their lives. Okay. Like we all have to do. We all have to go to the bread shop. We all have to get groceries we, and the kids need to play. So it, it gave me uh, some much more faith in, in, in people doing just regular things. Okay. Uh, after the day in Kabul, we then flew 140 kilometers northwest to a town called Barmian, where the marathon is held. Okay. And this is the town. It's at 9,000 feet and in the foothills of the Hindu Kush mountains. I remember you saying in the book that you have to climatize. 9,000 feet. Well, in Calgary, I think we're just over 4,000 feet. Four. I'm using feet right now, but whatever that is in meters. But it was, it's high. I remember you were saying you went for your first run and your lungs were Just about killed me. Burning. My lungs were, <laughs> that, that first 10 minutes, the lungs are like wow. with a vice on them. Thinner. And you're trying to, you're trying to release them and it does eventually, but we're at 9,000 feet, stunningly beautiful uh, in these valleys uh, when you can see the Hindu Kush mountains. And the thing about Barmian is the, the, what it's noted for is a massive sandstone cliff where there are two huge Buddhas cut out. Oh, yeah. And in the, two, in the two cutouts were two 50 meter Buddhas, but in uh, 2001, the Taliban blew them up. Okay. So now they're just massive openings, but also there are caves in the cliffs. And this is sort of one of the incredible uh, sites in Barmian. But one thing to share with you, Terry, and this is where I think we don't really understand very well other countries, 
the history. We tend to think we're so advanced in the Western world, you know, kind of the US, um, and the other countries are sort of backwaters, be it mm. Afghanistan or Iran or Iraq, but it's a point of interest. The oldest ever oil painting was found in a cave in Barmia. Oh, really? So not in Greece, not in Egypt, not in China, but in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. You think, how on earth? Well, the reality is, centuries ago, uh, Barmian was on the trading route for the Silk Route. Mm. So mm. we had a conflux of East and West traders. They traded spices and jewels and cloth. And so this was a hub of, uh, of, of the, uh, the highest order of all those type of arts and foods and so on. So it, in its time, it was, it was just an amazing um, central point for many things, sure, yeah. you know, whereas we were at that time, you know, you know, Canada and the States were a backwater. I mean, we, we, so it just shows you that it's when you dig in, you dig it's amazing in what you find out. out. Yeah. yeah. So the race route went through the mountains through somewhat treacherous paths. I remember here. Well, well, okay. So the, so the 2016 race was on the road. Okay. So it went from the, it went from the cliffs, but it went, uh, 21.1 kilometers up on the road. So it was uphill. So it went from 9,000 feet to 10,500 feet. Okay. So you're climbing the whole time. Right. And then obviously it's an out and back and you come down from there. So it, it was a road marathon um, in 2016. I went back last year and actually they ran the marathon around the national park, the Bandamere National Park, okay. around these lakes. It was much more of a trail, trail marathon. So no, it wasn't. It wasn't a um, a treacherous trail marathon. It was a road marathon. But because of the elevation, it was as you say. The the oxygen was down twenty five thirty percent. Yes. So you're you're sucking in, and you're feeling the fatigue very wow. quickly. Yeah. So how many? Uh, you had quite a few locals join in like last minute. Yeah. So so in 2016 there were a hundred runners in the marathon, of which ten were international runners. And they came from Canada, France, the US, the UK, all over, which was cool, men and women. Uh, but then there was 90 Afghan men and six Afghan women. Okay. Okay. So that was the mix. But also, there was a 10K race mm. where there was 150 runners, of which 100 were Afghan schoolgirls. Nice. So that was kind nice. of the mix. Now, if you remember the first year, there was one Afghan woman, Sanab. Right. Uh, in the year I went, there were six. In 2017, there were 12 Afghan women. And last year, when I went back, there were 22 Afghan girls and women. So this thing's growing. This thing's, and, and so the next one will be held uh, in October, November of this year. Okay. The 5th. Okay, great, yeah. great. And it'll just keep growing, hopefully. We hope so. We, we just think, yeah. when you see <clears throat> the enthusiasm of these girls and women uh, in participating in this event, a co-gender event, which is very unusual, um, then it's just, it's, you can just see it growing. And the reason, just to share with the viewers, the reason they can hold it in, in Bamiyan is because it's the home of an ethnic group of Afghan people called the Hazara people. Okay. And they, they are, that group have been persecuted by other Afghan group, ethnic groups um, over the years. So they're very, even internally, they're persecuted. But that has made them fiercely independent mm -hmm. and they are pro-women's sport and education. So that's why they welcome us to come. Oh, okay, great. They but so it's a bit of an oasis in yeah. terms of actually holding this kind of event in Afghanistan. Sure. Well, that's and that's fantastic. one of the learnings. It's not just one story about <clears throat> Afghanistan. Like anything, when you look closer, it's multi, it's multi-layered, it's complex. Uh, how many people live there approximately? Uh, well, in the in the town, there's about thirty thousand, but then there are. Uh, Farms and so on spread throughout the valleys, okay. where 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 the other people live, the other Hazara people. Neat. So, what was the starting time? Because imagine it gets pretty hot. Well, well, this is interesting. So, Bamiyan is the temperatures during the year are actually very similar to Calgary, because okay. it's in the mountains. Right. So, yeah. no, you're not. You know, you're not. It's not um, desert. Hot. I mean, you're nine thousand feet high. Right. So you got pretty high elevation. Okay. So when we went there, the starting time was eight o'clock in the morning and the temperature was plus five degrees, which I love. It's a little cooler and it was a perfect starting mm, temperature. Okay. Yeah. The race is done and you had a videography crew down there that captured a lot of good videos. Now the book is out and I believe 
the there's a documentary well that there is made. so the film uh, gosh the film took us uh, three and a half years to make and there was many ups and ups and downs with making the documentary trying to get funding trying to get grants a uh, real challenge and also we had a situation where we had to pull out one of the afghan women who was in the film because of death threats wow so her, she had to be removed from the film so it basically had to be completely re-edited wow that's uh, we did that we added an animation sequence which we think is amazing to tell her story um, without using her picture or her name sure so that's been added but the film was completed six months six weeks ago and we've sent it to a number of film festivals including wow. toronto calgary banff sundance Good. Um, but we've just heard that we have been ex accepted for our first uh, festival which is cinefest which is the Sudbury international film festival wow great. and it will be it will be shown on september the 22nd great. this year this year and sue and i will be there i lived in sudbury for 18 years That's and right. uh, my, my, we have family there and so it's very exciting to hear that somebody's actually and that's more dots connecting right because yeah well you, it's just it's amazing working it, that's right years. working there and sharing this story when i was there I was a mining engineer worked there in the mining business but now you know coming back with a film in city fest at the film festival it's all pretty wild it's all pretty that's strange great. how life takes congratulations us. Like, well, thank you it's uh, and hopefully it's, that serves as a launch for other film festivals well fingers up. crossed you know we'd love it's, to get it we'd love to get it in uh, toronto film festival Possibly as a premiere there, Banff obviously sure. just down the road, Calgary, I mean, home, kind of hometown here. Yes. And who knows, maybe internationally, uh, looking at New York or Sundance, or you just don't know. We just, we're just going to see where this journey takes sure, us, that's, Terry. That's Very great. Exciting. Congratulations. Well, Very the book exciting. is out. Be sure to get one. Like I said, it's the next best thing to being there, to reading it. And stay tuned because uh, hopefully the Sudbury Festival launches other opportunities Hopefully. with film festivals absolutely uh, i'm just dying to see what that's going to look like what, what, what the, i'm going to put myself in there as, as as if i was there to see how everything went oh, i think you'll i think you'll i think you'll love it and and it, and it just shows i say i like the book it just opens the picture up mm. uh, for a different view of a country that is very much maligned in the press and the reporting tends to be so negative well, there's another side. I think we have That's to. Right. I think it's incumbent yeah. where we can to share, share a bigger picture of what's going on. For sure. Well, that's been great. It's been nice talking to you, Martin. Again, thank you so much for letting us come into your living room today and and talk about the secret marathon, the marathon of Afghanistan. And uh, looking forward to seeing the movie, the documentary come out at the film festivals. And uh, congratulations again. That's a fantastic journey. Fantastic story that, that all of you put together. Great. Well, thank you, Terry. For a good thank cause. you for allowing me to share this story with the viewers today. And all of you, thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next episode of Out of Country. Of course, any updates on this uh, story, on this documentary coming up that will be released in the next few weeks in Sudbury, we, we will keep you posted on our blog site. So thanks again for joining us at Out of Country.